Good day, everyone. It is Revenge of the Fifth, and I am the Fat One. And I am the Black One. And this is a show where we talk about anything and everything. As long as it's interesting to us, of course. And on today's show, we will be celebrating the revenge of the Sith. Yes. So remember, put your comments and questions in the box, because those make our show go even so much better. And as long as they're entertaining, we may discuss them. And if not, you will understand the power of the dark side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's get this party started, shall we? Yes, enough of that. All right. So uh, on today's episode, uh, we've got a bunch of different things we want to talk about. Obviously, there will be a major focus on Star Wars, yesterday being May the 4th. and today being Revenge of the Fifth. And uh, so, you know, kind of interesting. Today is Wednesday. We normally broadcast on Tuesdays. So uh, mixing it up a little. Uh, unfortunately, life happens. Uh, you know, we do have to make money somehow. And, you know, <laughs> we, we, this isn't all we do. Uh, and so, unfortunately, I did have to work yesterday and was not able to find time to do this fantastic broadcast, but uh, alas, we make do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I guess it's better than making do do. Oh. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> so, uh, first and foremost, James, I got to ask, did you see Disney Parks has uh, released uh, video footage and uh, kind of a introduction, if you will, to the new cruise line uh, ship, The Wish? Uh, you you did mention this to me, and I I, I was unable to uh, find it, so I do apologize. Uh, I will but, say that it it oh, is uh, it is setting sail next uh, June. They start taking reservations later this month. So, um, if you are interested in cruising on uh, the Disney Wish, then uh, I would highly recommend keeping an eye out for those reservations popping up later this month and speaking of setting sail uh next year (laughs) the galactic star cruiser uh the new disney resort is uh going to be setting sail next year uh at disney world where uh it's it is it is interesting from a conceptual standpoint it's a hotel but you can only stay there for a couple of three days, days I think it's yeah. like I think it's like three days or something like that. Yeah, but but in that three days, it is a uh, fully immersive. Uh, your your family is part of a fully immersive like storyline. So that's, it's that's correct. Yeah. And one of the days you take a a shuttlecraft down to Bantu or Galaxy's Edge and um, yeah. get to hang out there and be a part of a. a supposedly a, a situation that happens there and you have exclusive access with the other people that are at the hotel at that time. Yeah. Um, so I think I, I am obviously extremely interested in staying at the galactic star cruiser when, when I go for my trip in a couple of years. Um, yeah. I can only imagine how quickly that will fill up, but uh, part <laughs> part of part of the Galactic Star Cruiser, a video that was just released yesterday, um, is of the lightsaber we've been hearing about for months now that Disney's been developing, and they showed it to us where it legit it it extends and. Um, it looks it's good. Not that, it's, it's not that plastic. It's not that plastic you fling out. Yeah, no. It, no, this is. You saw the video, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, so that... um, it, it and it's it legit. It comes out, stops, I, and so like, man, I'm if, if if that if that wasn't just CGI or something, and that is legit, then I'm mm, I'm interested. I'm interested. Yeah, I. I think that is the legit. And so uh, we'll see. Obviously, it was a teaser, you know, so what, a 13 second video or whatever. And so I'm yeah, sure there but, will be more to come. But, you know, I mean, like they, they do have those other, they have those other uh, lightsaber. I mean, 
the lightsabers that I used to sell at uh, that we had at Sharper Image were like they they had like the plastic tubing and everything, but like you know those were unfortunately it's not the same thing that we saw there, but by far. But I mean, you know that that was the closest thing that we had to real lightsabers at the time. You know what I'm saying? So. Yes, I I am excited. Uh, And if the only way that you can get these or see these in person is at the Galactic Star Cruiser next year, that'll be even (laughs) more of a reason to want to go. Yeah, absolutely. So, hey, man, we we also, uh, this last week, uh, we got titles for the new Black Panther and Captain Marvel film. Um, So Black Panther 2. I like that. Black Panther 2 is going to be Wakanda Forever. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cause I know that since they're, um, I, I'd really like to see what they do for this one due to the fact that, um, unfortunately, you know, in, uh, 2020, we lost Chadwick Boseman, mm-hmm. uh, to cancer. Uh, and they've said they're not going to recast black Panther. So, um, I'm hoping, well, uh, they, they specifically said they're not going to recast gonna, uh, re- Chadwick Boseman, uh, T'Challa. T'Challa, T'Challa. Yes. T'Challa. They're not going to recast. So I'm, I'm actually, I'm almost hoping that uh, what Cherie gets it. Because I have she she technically would be next in line. I have heard rumors that Killmonger's coming back. I'm not but, sure how. Okay. It is well, you know, it is the comic book movie, so you know. They, I mean, but the thing is, is that even Killmonger with Killmonger being, we didn't actually he supposedly died but you know they could have put him in a, a isolation chamber or something to heal him up or something i don't know we never yeah. actually saw that but interesting and uh what about uh captain uh, captain marvel 2 so captain marvel 2 is going to be called the marvels and in the logo we see uh monica rambo's logo that was on her chest in yeah. in WandaVision. We also okay. see the S from Miss Marvel in the end, so the Marvels. So my suspicion oh. is that this will be uh we will see like Miss Marvel, Captain Marvel, and uh Monica Rambo's uh what is what is her character name again? I don't remember. I, I can't remember right now. Yeah, but ultimately, yeah, I think it's going to be somewhat of a team up film, if you will. Um, yeah, so we're going to take so we're so we're pulling from the Disney Plus shows, and the, so we're really this time truly combining both universes. So, well, and yeah. we're we, we will I mean, like we're going to see that before then because Multiverse of Madness, it, it, Doctor Strange is going to come out uh, before the, the Captain Marvel film. So, when does that when now when does that is is it uh, I, is it the next Spider-Man and then uh, Multiverse of Madness? So coming up, we have Black Widow followed by Shang-Chi right. Right. followed by Eternals. Oh, okay. So all those are dropping. Then at the very end of the year, we have the Spider-Man No Way Home. Then uh, it's we- like no way to get, it's like, is it No Way Home? That's what it's called. No Way Home. Okay. And then at the start of next year, we will have Multiverse of Madness, Doctor Strange. So that will be likely... So that's five films. Is that the end of Phase 4? No, 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 no. There, there are many other films that are listed um, as part of Phase 4. Um, they're... No, not, not including the Disney Plus stuff, right? Not... So if, if you want to include the Disney Plus stuff, there are other shows in between, obviously. Don't forget right. about Hawkeye and Miss Marvel and Loki coming up soon. And so she there's Hulk. She is Hulk. That that's next year. Um, but there is a recent uh, video that Disney uh, or Marvel released uh, in honor of National Film Day or whatever it was. Uh, where they show all the upcoming trailers and logos and stuff like that. And that's where we got uh, the Marvels as well as Wakanda Forever. Oh, okay. And, and okay. we also got a super tease at the very end of that video of uh, a four logo. So likely to symbolize the Fantastic Four. Well, they've also said that those are gonna, like, they plan on rebooting that whole thing anyway. So It'll only be the third time they've been rebooted in, you know. 20 years or whatever so yeah i mean like that uh, like I, i'm not gonna lie. i enjoyed the first i, I enjoyed the first one um you just enjoyed jessica it. alba 
No, I actually, I, I, I enjoyed the film. Like, you know, uh, and it was funny because, you know, like you had Chris Evans doing that. And then, you know, years later, he ends up becoming Captain America, which is kind of funny. So he's still in the Marvel Universe. And, and also the same thing for Michael B. Jordan. He did a Fantastic Four movie and then comes back in, uh, in Black Panther as Killmonger. So, you know. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. So ultimately, a lot of good stuff coming in the near future for um, not only Disney parks, but as well as for uh, the MCU. So I'm super excited. Obviously, we'll be talking about those things more and more uh, as they come into reality. Um, of course, because they're interesting to us. <laughs> yeah. And, and if, if you're watching or listening to this right now and you, you're like, why are they talking about this crap? Go away. We enjoy this. This <laughs> this whole show is for us. You got to remember. Um, so uh, you, James, uh, interestingly enough, when I reached out to you to say, hey, is there anything on the show that you want to talk about? Um, you said that you wanted to discuss some Disney princesses. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. We, we can I do that. Um, a little weird that a grown man wants to have a Disney princess debate, but no, 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 no. I'm not judging. Don't, don't, don't go off the handle. It's okay. First thing I want to do before we go into the debate conversations, I want to list off the official Disney princesses. So okay. the official Disney princesses are as follows. Snow White, Cinderella, Aurora, Ariel, Belle, Jasmine, Pocahontas, right. Mulan, no. Tiana, Rapunzel, yes. Yes. Merida, Moana. Merida, okay, yeah. Okay. Merida, Merida, whatever. Yeah. Moana and okay. Rhea. Oh, so she is a part of the official list. That is correct. Okay, because I still have not seen that movie, so I didn't know if she was a princess or not. So those are your official <laughs> Disney princesses. Now, okay. I I will let you go ahead and take over at this point. What what do you want to debate on this? Why is Mulan on that list? So, I okay, like I understand. I, I understand that it's maybe it's a representation thing, but she has no ties to royalty. She wasn't even born into royalty. And she's not even marrying somebody that is a prince or some part of a royal family. So the fact that she is a princess bugs me for some reason. I do not know why. Because if you're gonna if you're gonna have them, if, if you're gonna have her on that list, there's uh where's where's Vanellope? Where is Elsa, Anna? Where where the, Vanellope is a legit princess. We found out in Wreck-It Ralph. Uh, Elsa and Anna, the only reason I can think is, it, I'm, I guess we won't spoil, spoil movies, even though Frozen 2 has been out for a while, uh, that I can understand, if you've seen those films, why they might not be considered princesses anymore. I, but I, for Mulan to be on that list... I, I just don't I don't understand it. So I, I so James go I gotta cut you off really quick because I yeah. are you a racist? No, by no means. Okay, I'm not. okay. So you have you clearly you're very impassioned here. You're very frustrated about the fact that there is an Asian <laughs> woman Mulan on this list. Hold on, but you're not at all complaining about the fact that there is a Native American woman Pocahontas who is not a princess. She's the daughter of a chief. That is not royalty. So I, that's, so I, uh -huh. in everything, okay, Pocahontas, I would consider a princess because she is the daughter of a chief and in that would be considered the royalty. Just like, uh, just like Moana, she is the daughter of the tribal chief. Therefore, that makes her a princess. Mm, no, no. In in Moana, he's actually called the king. He there there is that hierarchy within uh, that that uh, culture within the Native American culture. They don't look at themselves as kings or queens or princes or princesses, anything like that. 
So you're imposing your personal philosophies onto a, a culture rather than taking that culture for what it is. And that is disconcerting, friend. I'm talking about from the standpoint of what would I would consider to be in the royalty type, in the royalty vein of things. Mm -hmm. So the chief would be at the top. So his children would be basic. I mean, I understand it's not princes and princesses in that aspect, but I would consider Pocahontas to be a princess. And you'd be wrong. And that's your opinion. Um, because it's not it's like wrong. Pocahontas would take over the tribe if the chief died. That's not how that works. Right. But we also don't know if like, but in those, most of those cases, like, uh, what, uh, well, I guess Rapunzel would take who would uh, who would take over in uh, some of these other cases because it, like Snow White didn't go back to like her own castle apparently. No, she went so, off theoretically to be with the prince in his castle. Right. Right. So I mean, then she. So technically, I guess would she still be? Would she become queen eventually? She could. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. So I'm just saying, as far as as far as like the, the like a a hierarchy type setup, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about princesses, and so right. if you want to be technical, then you should have an equal frustration with Pocahontas as you do with Mulan. Well, like I said, I in the, in a hierarchy type structure, I I think that Pocahontas. Would I consider her as a princess? Like that makes sense to me. Please, anyone, if you're out there watching right now, you know, chime in. Let us know what you think. Please tell yeah. James how wrong he is. Um, because okay, okay. So pre but like, pre Frozen two, right? Anna should have been a Disney princess. On that, right? But right. she wasn't. Exactly, and that's I don't understand that. That doesn't make any sense to me. Because she is, well, she, I mean, her and Elsa are both are both princesses. They are in the line of that succession. Well, so Elsa's the queen. That's what I'm saying. That's the, the only thing. That's the so. only. Yeah, right. So I'm thinking that's the only reason that Elsa was not on said list because she is coronated as the queen. Now, here's the thing. I am all for, I am all for maybe starting kind of, I, uh, or if they already have a list, but of like Disney heroines. So ones that are not royalty, but are in that same vein, which I believe 100% Mulan should be at the top of that list because she is definitely, she is definitely one of the smartest. She, I mean, like, she fought so hard to even protect her own father. So, like, I'm all for that. Like, and she stepped up. She, like, you know, I mean, she stole her father's armor, pretended to be a dude so that her dad didn't have to go to war. And she was the one that, you know, she pretty much stopped. Well, I mean, you know, if you've seen the movie, but she stopped the Huns. And then once she found out that they were, com they were actually coming back, she, you know hauled you know hauled butt off to the uh to the emperor to to warn him and try and save him so i mean for all like disney heroines 100 percent mulan top of my list on that one so okay let's go back to your point of pocahontas and why you believe she should be a princess even though i would disagree uh how come you don't feel strongly about tiger lily then maybe she should be a princess Oh, you know what? Actually, I'm gonna lie. I totally forgot about Tiger Lily. Is even on there? I, oh, hmm. I totally forgot about Tiger Lily. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna. I'm not because I mean she's in like a tiny piece of of Peter Pan, mm -hmm. she, and like he saves her, and that's about it. That's all we ever really see from the uh, from the chief in that movie too. But I mean, so that's the only reason that I didn't even think of Tiger Lily. Okay, what about uh, what about Kiara from Lion King Two, Simba's kid? That's what I'm saying. Like she, I, like she could be a she could be a princess, 
so animals should should be the same as humans is what you're saying i would say i think she could be on that list i think i mean i think she could be on that list technically because i mean simba is the is the uh king Mm -hmm. of pot rock yeah so um while this has been a fun conversation, um, I, I think it's time to move on and you just need to accept uh, Mulan and stop being such a racist um, because uh, there does need to be representation. Uh, That's what I said. That's what I said. But at the same time, I think they could make they could make a they could make a, a princess of Asian descent. And I think to some extent we see that in Raya a little bit. So yeah, so, maybe I mean, you see Mulan fall off and you can be happy about that. I, it's not like I'd be happy about it, but I'm just saying, I just don't think she belongs on the princess list. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, the, the next uh, topic that James wanted to discuss is some frustrations he's having in the workplace around seeing individuals in stores. So James, I'll let you go ahead and explain. Uh, I asked, I've been, I've been asking a couple people, like when I, I, like people who work at Walmarts, for example, that I see. So I'm not just randomly talking to random people. Like you seem to have an issue with, but um, (laughs) um, I've been seeing people work harder to get an item than I think it should be. Can you elaborate Um, what, what you've seen? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. So I, I, in the past week, I watched the gentleman pull a Gatorade. Actually, he pulled two separate. So he pulled one Gatorade, put it down, pulled another one out, and then reached further back to grab a Gatorade, a pack of Gatorade, mm-hmm. and then proceeded to put it on his, sh- on his cart and walk away. But I was like, bro, like... Well, I wouldn't have been, it probably wouldn't have bugged me as much as at least if he put everything back the way he got it. Cause I literally just set everything up and he saw me do this stuff. But like, it, I was just like, why would you pull multiples to get to one that is further back than the one that's right there? Another example, uh, 12 packs. Uh, I saw a gentleman pull a 12 pack out and go grab another 12 pack that was harder to get to and pull that out. And I was just like, why? Like, but yeah, I don't, I, I just don't understand why. Okay. Okay. So you're working uh, harder to get to. Let's, let's talk about that. Okay. So you're annoyed by seeing people reach back further. I don't know, maybe to grab a product that might be, newer and fresher um, because let's say those items in front, obviously, as you know, with rotation, you're supposed to put the oldest in front, right? True. But so, so maybe they are thinking if I reach back further on the shelf, I might be grabbing something that has a longer expiration date or uh, is going to be a fresher product. Right. Uh, So that could be part of it. Did you think about that? Uh, No, it's, it's not frustrating to me. It was just confusing to me. Like why, why would you reach further back? To- That's right. That's right, Stephen. FIFO, first in, first out, right? On perishable items. Always grab products from the back. See, this is not a crazy thing, James. This, you, you yourself, please, when you go to buy a bag of potato chips or whatever, you know, chip based product that you're eating, do you grab that first bag right in front? Sometimes. Mm, do you? Sometimes. But the majority of the time. About- I'll go, normally I go like one, just like one, maybe two back. That's it. Just Okay. And why do you do that? I do that because I know chips, the ones up front, sometimes like we talked about, people will hit them and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So to get a bag that's a little bit more full chips, Mm -hmm. I will go like one, two back. But that's not like I'm reaching back. I'm not moving stuff. I'm just simply, all I have to simply do is just go back, pull it out. And again, I'm not. I have no problem with it. If you want to reach back, uh, the I get the part about being frustrated if a person just messed up your work. They took them off and didn't put them back. I understand that. Yeah, that that is, that had, is annoying. I get that. that. Now I have had a person. I have had a person. They actually grabbed it. Um, they grabbed the one right behind it, which I, and I was like, okay. But then he put the one that he took off the front. He put that back, and I was like, thank you, man. 
<laughs> so, did, did you actually thank him? Yeah, I actually thanked him. I was like, thanks, bro. Like, cause he actually put, he, he knew I, cause he saw me working on some of the other stuff too, as that further down the line. And he went, he grabbed it and then he put it back. And I was like, thanks, man. He's like, Hey, I know how it is. So I, you know, it could also be just a thought because you did mention that these people are seeing you do some of this work and touching these items. Maybe they're hoping if they reach back for, far enough that they'll grab one that you didn't touch. But I'm just like, especially like I'm, well, I, I guess my gloves aren't totally clean either, but like, yeah, but I mean, I'm wearing, I don't, I'm wearing gloves, all that kind of stuff too. So when I put stuff up, you know, and I, I actually move. <laughs> And so the thing is, even if they're trying to get away from something that I touched, I pretty much probably touched it because, like, I'm constantly moving stuff forward and backwards and stuff like that. So, but it's all about mentality, that, right? It's not. Yeah, it's it, absolutely. It's it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a perception thing. So, yeah, I I think you uh, I think you're a little upset over, like I said, I get the part of somebody touching something and not putting it back. That I get, but outside of that. You know, trying to get a fresher product from the back, you damn right. You I know? just it just it just confused it just confused me. It really just confused me because the even the item that he gra- even the item that he grabbed had the same had like the same expiration dates. They all had the same like again but like mentality. Said, but as Steven maybe just pointed did, yeah. out, I also grab items in the back so that the items haven't been touched by a bunch of other customers. And I mentioned to you, this to you the other day. Maybe the people are germaphobes, man. It it happens. Yeah, no, that's true. So that I, very true. So I think you need to stop being so judgmental. We've talked about this before. I think you need As to I stop. Said, it wasn't a frustration. It was just it was just a confusion thing. I just didn't I just didn't understand why they were moving like just like moving a whole bunch of stuff to get to another item it just made just seemed harder to get to something than that because if you're concerned about somebody touching something then you've also touched the same thing to get to something else so yes but to the person that's doing that they don't care how they're affecting the other people potentially i guess that yeah i guess that's true too (laughs) So, uh, James, uh, I, I got to tell you, on Sunday, episode two of Secrets of Heritage House aired. Um, so uh, we're two episodes in. Oh, snap. Really? Yeah, oh, yeah. oh, I'm behind, bro. Yeah, behind. man. Did you finish season one yet? Nah, bro. Bro, you're killing it's, me, Smalls. Uh, <laughs> you need to, uh, you need uh, to finish more, season I'm, one so you can start on episode yeah. or season two because yeah, now we're, more, we've more. got. We've got two episodes that have aired. Um, the second only, episode, but only one is only one's available right now, though, right? Only one is available via podcast. That's correct. Podcast, the, yeah. The, okay. the second episode will be available this Saturday, okay. um, and then this Sunday, the third episode will air. So, yeah, um, you know, it's it's a lot of fun to go back and listen to these. You know, having done the voiceover work, and it, it's fun to listen to it now, hearing it with the editing done, hearing it with you know the sound effects added in, things of that nature. Because you know, one of the scenes, for example, I'm walking into a sheriff's office, right? Walking in, right? And I'm only doing voiceover yeah. work, so now hearing me open the door, hearing my footsteps, me sitting down in a chair, which none of that did I actually do. It's a lot of fun. Right. And, and it That's adds, kind of cool. yeah. yeah, it adds yeah. to that feel. Uh, so I'm, you know, uh, for example, tonight I'm recording, uh, for the next episode that I'm working on. And, okay. you know, I think I have one scene in, t- in the episode that I'm recording tonight. Um, so I'll probably be done recording, you know, 10, 15 minutes and I won't hear this episode for another couple of weeks because, you right. know, we're a couple of weeks ahead. And, and, and so yeah. by the time, by the time I actually hear what I record tonight, I've forgotten what I've said. Uh, I for, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so, so it is even as somebody who's a part of the production, listening to it as an audience member, it's a lot of fun. So right, it's, and it's a lot. It's a lot. Di- it's a it's a lot different than um, when you, I mean I've worked on some some voiceover stuff and some TV shows, things like that. But then once you actually see the final product, it's like, oh snap, that looks real. That looks way better. Or here in your case, you hear the that final product. It's like, oh okay, I like that because it's like you you didn't you all you did was sit there and you 
you said the lines and you i'm sure you had to maybe if if there was some sort of action involved you were maybe doing some of that but overall it's not like you you were physically doing these actions so to mm -hmm. actually hear them and, and combined with everything else plus hearing everybody else because uh in 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 this case you're not recording with anybody else you're just recording from home mm -hmm. and so you're not inter you're not having a conversation with anybody else uh that you might be having a conversation with in the scene uh is that is that true like if you're, no. there's a conversation do you we, guys actually record it together or do you we do typically record uh the scenes with the other people in the scenes there are times oh, that, okay. that okay. Uh, adr is done to to get the voice that's missing um but for example, tonight when I record, likely it's a two-person scene. Likely the other person will be there, and so we'll okay, okay, we'll cool. record the scene together. And okay, yeah, then that okay, that's actually a little bit yeah, because I I've seen some stuff where like they don't actually record together, and so it's like when they they have to sometimes bring other people back in to do to read record stuff. So, but yeah, no, in that case, that's awesome that you guys actually get to record conversations together. That's dope. Yeah, we none of us have our cameras on really though, so I have oh, no idea. So you who'll... haven't actually seen the people. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's interesting. That's I mean, you know, that's that's that'll be that's definitely interesting. Are you guys gonna do like uh, I mean, like once this season is done, is there gonna possibly be like a some sort of rap party or something? So you'll actually meet yeah, the people. Yeah, I've heard that there's gonna be a rap party at the end of the season. Um, so I look forward to that, and you know, I, I have seen some of the people uh yeah because maybe they do buy on the camera but mostly are there picture i think i saw pic people's pictures on did i see bios or something like that uh yeah some of the people have bios up on the website and stuff like that so it's yeah. uh it's fun and i look forward to meeting and greeting everyone at the end of the season um and hopefully you know make it on to the next season if there is another one we'll see um but uh I heard you had some more random knowledge for us and that it is specifically pertaining to, you know, today I, being Revenge of the Sith. So, uh, I do. I'm actually going to drop, I'm just going to drop three of them, three quick ones on you. Um, bear in mind folks, I don't know what he's going to discuss. He has not shared them with me. Only thing I know is that they're Star Wars relevant. Yes, that is correct. So, uh, apparently in the original draft of Star Wars, R2-D2 actually spoke English, but uh, R2-D2 apparently was kind of a jerk. <laughs> uh, he, uh, uh, like it said, um, let's see, it said there was a couple insults that he threw out at C-3PO, like, uh, you're a mindless, useless philosopher. You're nothing more than a dim-witted, emotionally brained intellectual. Uh, so <laughs> why, and it said, uh, why were you uh why you were created is beyond my logic systems so wow. i was kind of like i was kind of like dang bro like r2 was uh, a I'll, dick yeah I, I i like beep boop beep boop a little bit better than and c3po responding to some of it than, <laughs> than yeah him actually throwing those lines out there i'd have been like bro Destroy this droid, bro. Yeah. This, <laughs> so is, like, the, this, is, the, this is the this droid, is the droid you're looking for. for right? Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, man, all right. Okay. I've okay, never the, heard that one before, but okay. Yeah. So um, that was uh, apparently that was uh, in the original that R2-D2 was supposed to actually talk, but I'm glad they did not do that. Um, some people probably already knew this, but um, in the original Return of the Jedi, um, the ending actually saw Luke turn evil. Um, when George Lucas originally pitched the idea, um, he was going to remove uh, Vader's mask, then uh, put the mask on himself. And uh, it said, uh, the line apparent. so it actually says, uh, this was from the co-writer. It said, uh, Luke takes off it, takes off his mask uh the mask is uh a very the very last thing and luke puts it on and says now i am vader uh and i don't know if this was a part of it oh and this is surprise the ultimate twist now i will go and kill the fleet and i will rule the universe so um it, it'd be some people already know the original 
title for Return of the Jedi was actually supposed to be Revenge of the Jedi, mm-hmm. but it was changed due to the, and actually I saw a guy that actually has a poster, uh, Revenge of the Jedi. Um, but uh, they decided to change that because revenge is not a trait of a Jedi. That's correct. Uh, so that's, so, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I almost kind of would like to just maybe if they had you know, like re- cut that in, like had, had actually uh, filmed it and then decided nah, And cause it says, um, it says uh, Lucas ultimately decided to go a different way, feeling like Luke, going evil is a bit too dark since his franchise is for kids. I don't, that's what, that's just in the thing that I'm reading. So, I mean, I, t- it, ultimately I understand because that would have been a very different, <laughs> that would have been a very different movie. Yeah. Um, and then, um, Yoda was almost a monkey. I mean, he kind of has monkey like, uh, qualities to me anyways. But he apparently was almost a monkey. Uh, and the plan uh, was to actually hire an actual actor, a simian actor, um, to do Yoda instead of Frank Oz doing, the, ultimately, who became, who was the puppeteer for uh, Yoda. So, yeah. And with it says... Um, it says there are photos of the monkey in training and th- and the weirdly hideous Yoda mask prototype. So <laughs> So yeah, just you know, three quick three quick Star Wars random Star Wars facts. Awesome. So, I think right now is a really great time for us to uh take a quick dance break. What do you think? Dance break. All right. And we're back. Alrighty. Yes, so, uh, so James, you got any updates for us? I, I, I think uh, I think we've got a special guest next week. Is that right? Oh, we most certainly do. So next week, we've been teasing it for the past couple weeks. But Joe, Joe Mag, the Magdalena, he is a Southern-based uh, system game designer. Uh, he's worked with uh, some of the biggest companies out there. So again, he's worked with Blizzard, so World of Warcraft. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just seeing this dancing bear thing going real quick. Um, so yeah, he's worked on uh, with Blizzard. So that's World of Warcraft, Overwatch, Diablo, and a number of other items. Uh, Nyat, Ni- say that name for me. Nyanic. I don't know why I can't seem to say it, but Nyanic. Uh, so they were involved with Ingress, Pokemon Go, uh, Harry Potter, Wizards Unite. So um, we're going to definitely be picking his brain. And uh, we're going to try and find out what the next big thing is on the horizon. Right on. Um, so to round out the remainder of the show, we're going to give it uh, all to Star Wars. Uh, you know, we already been talking about it throughout the episode, but, um, yes, sir. you know, first and foremost, I want to talk about what Star Wars means to us. And James, I'll, I'll let you lead off. What, what does Star Wars means? What does it mean to you? Oh, man, like it was, it kind of, it, it, it was that, it was that true, uh, legendary story you know like uh and and it it has highs it has lows uh, but but overall i mean just the over arc of uh overall just grabbing the this storyline that follows through years to make it all kind of culminate was i mean it's it's an amazing feeling uh i mean you know like i wasn't around for the original series but I have been around for the the last uh, yeah six six movies, so I mean overall, I was I was very happy. I was very happy. It's 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 one of those things I remember watching as a kid and going, what what there space that and I mean I love space too. So I mean the the fights everything. I mean and they've only gotten grander. They've only gotten grander as they went on. So. Yeah, I I would tend to agree with you on a lot of what you said there. I think for me, I can remember, you know, being very young and my my dad introducing me to uh, the Star Wars films on VHS. Um, yeah. Yeah. And just being mesmerized by what I'm seeing because, you know, as a young kid, it 
four, five, six, you, you don't fully grasp everything that's going on, but you definitely understand the big action scenes and seeing people fight with these lightsabers and seeing these right. ships flying through space. And, uh, you know, it's just very eye catching and, um, you know, it's intoxicating to, to an extent. And so then seeing the re-releases, uh, of the, the first three movies, did you, did you actually see all of them in all, theaters? All of the, the when they the re-released? Original, yeah. When they re-released. Yeah. yeah, I did. Yeah. I only, I only saw new hope. I, I, I somehow just missed the others. Um, yeah. They came, Cause they came out very quickly back to back. Right. And then, of course, you know, the the trilogy, uh, the prequel trilogy was right. released while we were in high school. And I, I can the remember, first, yeah, episode I, can remember one. I remember when they didn't do midnight releases, but they released on day of. And, yeah. and if you wanted to see the first the first film, you showed up at, you know, nine o'clock in the morning or whatever. That's right. And I, I remember going to see episode one in the theaters, bright and early, skipping school. To oh, go see you, it. <laughs> yeah, we actually um I know uh I think um me, Chris, and Scott, I think we went to go see the uh, like we went after school. Like I my mom actually took me down to Union Landing mm-hmm. and this is like that was like when they, they were still uh very new. Like yep. that theater that theater I think had just opened up not too long before. And I think we didn't even was the box office even open at that time or do we have to go to the, I don't remember. But all I remember is that we bought tickets um, a couple days beforehand to go see episode one uh, after school on, on, on that day of release. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, you know, so for me, when I think back on my, my life in, in regards to, to star Wars um, great moments in time of going to see these films, uh, from you know the the best film to the worst film, which we will rank here in a moment. Um, but regardless, always a good experience. There's always, even in the worst film, there are highlights. Um, and, and so, uh, while you know, uh, segueing a little bit into ranking, you know, I think we yeah. both agree that the worst Star Wars film. Uh, and and when we rank them, we're only going to talk about the nine in the Skywalker saga. Um, yeah, but- I mean, I, I like we 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 discussed because we we're not we're going to push Solo to the side. And although I I truly think Rogue One is one of the best Star Wars movies, <laughs> we're we're sticking to the Skywalker saga. Yes, the nine films, the episodic yes. films. Um, but we would agree, I think, that uh, the Phantom Menace is significantly the worst film out of the yeah. nine. And, yeah. uh, but that's even a, in, even in that some film, of the best fight scenes though, <laughs> yes, even in that film, some of the best fight scenes, a fantastic villain that's wasted, uh, in Darth oh, Maul. Oh my God. Um, you know, there are redemptions of, of Darth Maul throughout other stories as we know, but in regards yeah. to the Skywalker saga, the nine episodic films, Darth Maul is wasted. <laughs> and, I and, mean, but although that, that I will, that fight scene between uh obi-wan qui-gon and and maul on on naboo what by far one of the best fight sequences in all of star wars absolutely like hands hands down one of the best fight sequences i mean i i remember being in my chair like oh he doubled oh (laughs) yes Ooh, yeah. Nuts, man. Was... So, so needless to say, those moments uh, are, yeah. I think, for me, the only what I reflect thing. on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. with that, we're gonna go ahead and rank the Star Wars films. Uh, I have my list. James has his list. Uh, yeah. We'll we'll see where they line up, where they don't. Uh, would you yeah. like to go first, or would you like me to go first? Well, uh, I, you know what? I will. Um, let's go. Let's go movie by movie. I think we'll just okay go tip one at a time. So we're gonna go yeah. worst, worst to best, and we've already worst said, best. we've already said uh, that Phantom Menace is the worst. So Phantom Menace is the worst. Now, and I will also say one of the things that Jake Lloyd, I, I mean, mm, God bless the kid. kid, but yeah. But the thing was is that apparently, uh, apparently he froze up on set, like during the the callbacks and all that kind of stuff. 
he was very good. He was very animated. He did, you know, that's why he got the role. But apparently when he got on set, he just froze up. You know and what? So, that, that's to me, that's a crap excuse. I mean, they right, filmed all so, they filmed all of Back to the Future and went back and refilmed the whole thing, more or less, to put Michael J. Fox in. So there's no reason oh. they couldn't recast that kid. Uh, we'll, we'll do an we'll episode about, on that then. We'll yeah, have to talk about um, that later. But but yeah, no. But basically, yeah. So um, so basically, all of Jake Lloyd's uh, facial expressions were digitally in, put in. I was like, bro, that seems like too much work to me. Yes. But whatever. Um, okay. So right. yeah. So we next, we're in agreement. Next film up. episode so, one. So second to worst. worst. Second to what? worst. In my opinion. Um, Oh, this is tough for me to actually say. So, um, last, last, wait, what was it? Oh no, yeah, Last Jedi. What? I don't know, man. Like something about it just didn't click with for me. Okay, so you're saying so Last Jedi was Episode Eight, so that was the right. one that focused around uh, Luke and Yoda's back and and the the blue milk out of the tea. You're, so you're gonna. <laughs> I, so you're saying that some, that one. Some about that. Some about that movie just didn't really con, uh, connect with me. Okay. Okay. That's fine. For me, uh, I am saying that the second to worst is the Rise of Skywalker, Episode oh. Nine. Okay. I think the last film in in the the Skywalker saga is pretty bad. I feel like they did not do a good job of of wrapping everything up. I don't think they did a good job of really explaining Exegol and, and the, the emperor. And I feel like it was, I, we yeah. just need to finish this. And they kind of just threw a bunch of crap out there to see what would stick against the wall. And I feel like it was a real throwaway. that. Yeah, I can, you know what? I, I can, I can agree with you on that. I can't agree with you on that. They did kind of, that actually, cause uh, for, Rise of Skywalker is going to be my next one. So you're saying your third from moving up from the bottom. So your next one is, yeah. is Rise the Rise of Skywalker. Of Sky okay. Yeah. Because, uh, be because like, like I think, um, I mean, yeah, there was moments, but again, it just seemed, it was like, I remember watching it and going like, huh? <laughs> like some stuff was kind of like, like they made this whole build up for the, 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 this, uh, what was it? The final order or something like that. This mm -hmm. fleet of ships that were going to go out. And then it just kind of, I was like, what the hell? Like, huh? So, yeah. So for me, <clears throat> third up from the bottom, I had attack of the clones. So that's the second in the prequel series. Okay. Um, and I, I will counter myself by saying, uh, watching episode two, then watching all of clone wars, then watching episode three, I think it, I would rank differently. But since we were purely looking at the Skywalker saga and not including right. anything else, right. uh, that, that's where I had to put it. Um, yeah. So um, I would also agree with you that uh, my next my next on that list would then be would be Attack of the Clones. Um, I I did enjoy. I like. Don't get me wrong. I enjoyed Attack of the Clones. Like, um, but I mean, again, it was primarily that huge epic fight scene at the end of the film in the arena on Geonosis with every, you know, like you had pretty much every Jedi in sync. It, oh yeah. They were apparently <laughs> stormtroopers in that. Um, you had, uh, you know, finally seeing Mace Windu in action, you know, like legitimately seeing all these other Jedis come out of, out of the cuts. Um, Fisto. Uh, you know, so it was just a huge droids, and you had um, you had like the the those beasts in the arena, and I was just like, bro, this is this is legit fight, bro. Yeah, for me, um, this this will be the first film from the original trilogy. Um, I put Return of the Jedi as my fourth from the bottom, uh, and frankly, it's the damn Ewoks. Um, oh, you see. <laughs> My mine is a mine is a completely different reason why uh, Jedi is on that list, uh, but uh, why why Jedi is my my fifth 
Like, where, where are we at right now? I don't even remember what. So we just you <laughs> just gave me your fourth. I just gave you my fourth from the bottom. So Return of the Jedi is mine. Attack of the Clones is yours. So now we're at the fifth right. spot. So then for me, that would be Jedi. Uh, and the only reason, uh, as as in chasing Amy, Darth Vader's Sully, uh, Nubian visage is Sully. <laughs> to remove the mask and find a creeple, crusty old white man. <laughs> yeah, that 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 was rough as well, right? So I, I no, get I mean, that. Yeah, I like. I mean, so like, I wasn't I wasn't like a huge fan of Ewoks, but I think because I was a kid when I first saw that film, I was like, oh, Ewoks are they're like teddy bears. So so, but uh, but yeah, like kind of. I was like, wait, what? What? Why is? why is he this old white man like cause, especially because i knew james earl jones and i knew that voice and so i was like wait huh wait huh <laughs> no i agree with you so okay so next one up now we're we're in the sixth spot we're rounding out the what would be a total of two trilogies where what do you have in the sixth spot did you give yours did you give yours no i was trying to avoid it uh the force awakens I, uh, I I don't have a whole lot to say. I feel like it, and it makes sense that it's right there in the middle of the pack. It was kind of, right. it was, it was okay. It was nostalgic. It was, um, it was, it was basically the first movie. It was, it was a new hope. Yeah. It, it very much was like a new hope. Um, yeah. So I, it, I, it, I will yeah. agree with you on that. Yeah. So I, that's I, why agree with you there. I put it there in the middle of the pack because I didn't feel like it was too bad. I didn't feel like it was very good. It was nostalgic. So I put it in the middle. I think it was, uh, I think that what really got me was the ending of that film. Uh, just when you see her, you see, you finally see Luke again and she's handing over the lightsaber mm -hmm. that, that was like, way to end it, way to end it. And yeah. that's, so yeah, definitely. I agree with you. Basically it was, it was, I enjoyed it again, but it was the first, it was basically the first movie. Um, so yeah. So what do you got in the next slot in the, uh, six? So in the, in the sixth slot, um i will i will go with you on uh is that wait so we got three more films yeah so uh in the sixth spot yeah i will go with you on on uh force awakens okay for me middle pack, middle pack. that's where i have a new hope really yeah i obviously i think a new hope is better than force awakens um but uh as you'll see with my top three uh, what's kind of interesting is one of each uh, from the different trilogies. Um, okay. Okay. That wasn't with intent. I, I truly no, did. Rank. It just happened. Just happened that way. Yep. Okay. So, uh, so yeah. Um, what do you got in the seventh slot, James? Seventh slot is revenge of the Sith. And I, 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 Interestingly enough, uh, I haven't mentioned that one yet. Um, so, uh, I, I like episode I three. like your placement. I like your placement. Episode three of yeah. Revenge of the Sith. Um, I, I think because that was that was what I, I it was honestly it was one of the most satisfying films. Um, not from the standpoint that we finally see Vader and everything else because that was kind of disappointing. But um, when we first see Vader. Where's Padme? No! I was like, mm, Yeah, that was painful. Uh, yeah, it was super painful. But um, actually seeing seeing the fall of Anakin, how you understand why he um, why he ended up going the route that he did. He he got he got played. Was, he got played. The Jedi got played yep. so hard. Yes. Um he had like Palpatine had been under their nose the entire time. They've been playing to his whim. Sidious was, I mean, literally, Darth Sidious was right under their nose the entire time. And somehow, even the most powerful Jedi on the council got clouded. They could not, somehow they did not see this man re grasping for power the way that he was. He was, you could tell. The, like his power grabs were they weren't like super obvious but they were i mean i think also because as an audience we're not we're we're seeing it and we kind of already and and for some of us we already kind of knew how everything had to play out anyways but um when you're looking at it going like bro how do you not how do you miss this you guys are supposed to be these very wise especially like yoda he was like you know clouded 
he was he was very clouded throughout the the original trilogy trying to figure out what the he knew there was a bigger plot he he just couldn't see it and maybe that was because uh palpatine was right there and was very close and so they were also trying to appease the republic and with him being in charge of the republic and all that kind of stuff i think it was it was one of those things also was that the uh was that the film now people hate jar jar banks i'm not one of those people i kind of like jar jar banks but um jar jar is the reason for the uh the, giving the emergency powers to <laughs> to palpatine uh he was that vote that gave it to him so so in that jar jar is the reason that the uh that the emperor got well the future emperor uh, got those, got those. So yeah. For me, in the seven slot, or yeah, seven slot, yeah, I have, slot. I have Last Jedi. So that's that's probably the biggest difference between you and me is um, I I have Last Jedi significantly higher than you, and I think for me the reason that Last Jedi I have that high is um, seeing really the Luke story uh, really come to that end um, to understand that background. Of, of him trying to rebuild the temple, so to speak, and, and bring Jedis right. back into the fold and his fall. And then eventually with the end of the film, his uh, becoming one with the force and, um, you know, giving, giving those last powers to Ray. Yeah. 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 I, I, I just really felt like from a Jedi story and because again, we're talking about the Skywalker saga. Um, right. I felt like, to me, that's where that one belonged. It, it definitely does not belong at one or two, um, but it, it, I felt like it did belong in the top three. Uh, okay. So for okay. you, what is number eight? Or if we're looking at it from the other direction, what's the number two film for you? Number two for me, now I know people are going to disagree with me on this. Um, and the only reason is because my number one, I'll explain. But number two for me, is Empire Strikes Back. Now, Empire, in a lot of people's cases, I know is like the best film. And I agree. I actually really like, I really enjoy that film. And also it was the one of the original three that wasn't directed by George Lucas, which is really kind of interesting. But uh, but yeah, no, um, I, I, I think that one was kind of like a, a just a, a like almost they left you so like so many questions like wait what <laughs> you know search your feelings you know this to be true like wait hold up hold up what and actually i don't know if you've seen this video but there's this little there's this video that um a uh, uh, a dad shot of his daughter as she's watching um she's watching empire and it's that scene where uh vader you know finally reveals that um he is uh, he is the father of Luke Skywalker, and her face, just watching her through this whole thing, like he he pretty much started, um, like I think it's after uh, uh, Luke loses his arm. I don't remember exactly what point, but she was like she's watching this, and like you could tell it's her first time seeing it because she's like, oh, no. Huh? And so, like, so, like, just what? I mean, when after seeing the films and being like, "What?" and then like watching, watching some of the reactions from from younger people, uh, seeing the trilogy for the first time, it is, it's, it, it's, it's a great, it's a great moment. So, absolutely. Uh, for me, in that number two slot, uh, I have Revenge of the Sith. Okay. I, uh, you know, you, you had it one back. Uh, I have yeah. it, I have it there. I, I definitely, uh, for me, uh, I felt like very much as you said, you know, seeing Anakin make that change, uh, understanding the, the con that there was on the Jedi as well as on Anakin. I think yeah. it was again, and that this- was played out. That was played out from one. Mm-hmm. We're going to keep our eye on you. Like he, like Palpatine already, I think Palpatine had, he was playing the longest game of chess ever. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> All right. We're at the number one slot. And if people, All right. if people have been paying attention, they know what each of us has left. And right. uh, I'm not even going to go into mine because you already covered it for me uh, with your two uh, slots. I just want 
I just want to hear you. I want to hear your, I just want to hear your opinion on it too. But, but, um, but yes. And my number one spot is a new hope. And the reason I believe, uh, and the reason that I have a new hope at number one, uh, and this has actually changed over a while, but, but the reason I actually ended up putting that at number one now is because uh, without a new hope, Star Wars, I don't think exists. Um, and so, I mean, like that was, I mean, just the meeting of all these iconic characters and being able to follow them for so many years, I think with, without, without uh, a new hope, we don't have this Skywalker saga that we, we, we've had these nine films over like what, 30, 40 years. Yeah. Uh, and I, I don't hate on that decision. I had new hope at four, at the number four slot. Um, right. And, you know, for me, it is a good film. It, it definitely is above the middle of the pack. Right. right. Um, but I get your logic. Um, but that was not how I was ranking. I was ranking purely based off of the overall Skywalker saga and how uh, each affected each other and um, what really came out of each of those films. And, uh, so for me, the number one is, of course, Empire Strikes Back. Right. Um, and for all of the reasons you've already listed, and just because it is, it it's the best film. Uh, it 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 tells the best story out of all of them. If you take it alone, it 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 leaves you with so many questions. Seeing Han put in carbonite, I love you. I know. Um, you know some of those iconic lines. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Um, some of those iconic lines that we always seem to forget. Luke, I, I'm your father. No, nope, that's not what he nope. said. Um, Mandela effect. Uh, but you know, I think at the end of the day, Empire Strike Back strikes back is the best full package individual film. Um, so I will uh, likely put up a post on uh, Facebook with these rankings, uh, so you don't necessarily have to listen to us talk about all of them. You can just see it. Uh, for yourself again, if you want. Um, and, and you could definitely question us if you, and please, by all means, question us. Cause then, and we can, we can talk about that at a later time. Yes. And uh, so a couple quick things before we do wrap up the show, James, uh, what's your favorite star Wars television series so far? Ooh, wow. Um, well, the only, well, okay. Um, because it's the only real full one that we have um, uh, as far as uh, new shows, Mandalorian, definitely. Uh, and then uh, right behind that, I would say um, I really enjoyed Rebels because Rebels was one of those that um, I had. I had I had Hulu, but and Disney XD was on there. But of course, the shows that I actually wanted to see on Disney HD or XD were not on there, and Rebels was one of those. Um, and so when Disney Plus came out, Rebels was one of the first series that i watched because i was like i need to see this because i've been waiting for a long time to see rebels okay so i'll put so mandalorian followed very closely by rebels okay for me it's droids obviously no i'm just kidding uh, <laughs> <laughs> which i'm still waiting to see come on disney plus it should happen soon um but yeah. uh i I, I do want to give. I, want, I do want to rewatch Droids, but no, it is not my. Uh, however, my favorite is yes, Mandalorian. I agree with you. Uh, very closely followed by Clone Wars. Um, okay. Because yeah, because they had the last season on there too for that. Yeah. And, and for me, Clone Wars is so close to Mandalorian. And Mandalorian, uh, depending on what they end up doing with it, Clone Wars could take the number one spot back. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, but for me, Clone Wars, uh, because without Clone Wars, I don't think episodes two or three would mean anywhere close to what they mean. Um, I feel like that series really made the, it's that connect. Yeah. It made it so much stronger. It made it such a better, and, and even with clone wars leading up to episode four, there, there is stuff and I, I don't want to spoil anything because I know you still haven't finished watching clone wars. I know. Um, I know. So I, I definitely think when you finish it, it will, may move up into your number two then. Uh, how did, um, uh, and uh, you said you have not been able to watch the first episode of Bad Batch yet? I have not yet. 
Okay. Okay. I, yeah, I that, am, it I, it's it starts off great. That's all I'll say. It starts off great. Yes, I will be watching that later today. So yeah. Uh, all right. So we talked about what we enjoy so far. Now let's look ahead and what upcoming Star Wars project are you most looking forward to? This could be a series. This could be a you know a director that we know is working on a project. Anything you want. What upcoming Star Wars project are you looking forward to? Um, okay, I've kind of I I have not the last that I really saw um, of, of Star Wars. Um, I was kind of excited. I was I'm excited to see um, what they do with Ahsoka. Um, because like you know, I know in Clone Wars, I know in Clone Wars, um, there's a whole story arc with her, and 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 then in Rebels, she kind of she comes back, and then there's. And then, you know, we see in the Mandalorian, blah, blah, blah. So I'm really excited to see pre, uh, if, I don't know if they've said like where that story is supposed to take place. Um, Is it post that whole thing with the Mandalorian or is it pre that, whatever that is, it doesn't really matter. I'm just excited to see Ahsoka uh, have her own, have her own thing. Cause I think Ahsoka is, is a character that they introduced to us in Clone Wars and there's kind of just like disappears it's like no 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 you don't get to do that to us what happened to what happened to ahsoka yeah yeah i'm excited to see that as well but for me the 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 thing that i'm most excited to see is the upcoming obi-wan series uh seeing you oh is that that's gonna be on that's gonna be on disney plus too yeah with you and mcgregor back as obi-wan and his time on tatooine and uh yeah I think that is, I think I heard about that one, but I think that, yeah, I think, dope. yeah, that one, I, I don't know. I have always thought Ewan McGregor did a fantastic job as Obi-Wan. Oh, yeah. uh, I feel oh, like, yeah. I feel like, frankly, he's probably the strongest character in the uh, prequel trilogy. Uh, uh, oh, except for that, except for when he was whining in three. I mean, he's heartbroken, under- man. He's yeah. I, I, but I just felt like I, I don't he was know, like I a just, brother to him. Like, he was, and you were the chosen one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I feel like it was a little bit over the top, but yeah. I mean, I get it. You know, you've known no, this I, kid for you know ten plus years at this point, and yeah, you've, you've been trying you've to train with him, him and, and yeah, you've 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 watched him rise to the ranks. Mm-hmm. You have seen. Although some of his ideas were foolish, but he was right up there leading them. So, you know, he, you've he seen was... the best of him and the worst of him. And absolutely. Yeah. So I definitely look forward to seeing you and McGregor back as Obi-Wan and uh, trying to hopefully tie up some of that time between th- episode three and four. What, uh, what Obi-Wan was doing on Tatooine during that time. And actually, uh, we already, I, we, I know we, I, I'll still say one of my favorite Star Wars films uh, was, was uh, Rogue One. Um, and, and I think also because um, when I went to go see that film, we saw it in the D-Box seats. Do you know what those are? Yes. Yeah. We saw it in the D-Box seats. And so it was kind of, it was a, it, it was a totally different feeling. Cause like, you know, when they're flying, your, your seats move, you know, you're kind of flying with them and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So, that was, so I think that that kind of added to it, but I just think Rogue One is, is a is a great movie that that fills that gap that leads directly into uh a new hope which i was like oh okay um which i think was pretty dope if we were talking about star wars films period which so then it would include that it would include you know those crappy ewoks films it would include uh i totally forgot about that (laughs) it would include solo Uh, then i would agree i think the best hands down star wars film period is is rogue one i think yeah it, it yeah that yeah i'm actually you know what and then um we were talking about something that we're uh things that we're excited for um because i know ahsoka is kind of on the horizon but um i was really excited to see uh i i'm kind of interested to see is john favreau going to be on the helm for uh book of boba fett I am not sure if that's going to be him helming that. Um, I, I do. I look forward to that. More importantly, I think for me is from a film perspective, uh, you may or may not know, but uh, Taikita Watiti is uh, going to be directing a Star Wars film. And we don't know anything about it, 
but purely the fact that he's working on one um, makes me excited because if you'll recall, he's the guy that took Thor from the crappy place that it was and gave us, you know, uh, the amazing Thor that we saw with uh, Ragnarok. And um, well, I think it's his, and uh, just so, you, so the first, the first Thor was directed by Kenneth Branagh. Now uh-huh. the re- so Kenneth Branagh is a Shakespearean actor, and that's the, one of the reasons I think Thor went the way the first Thor went the way it did. Mm-hmm. Uh, I still there's no excuse, no excuse for whatever. What was Thor? What was the second one called? Uh, the worst. Yeah, whatever that was. I don't even. But that was to me still hard. Thor two is hard. is the worst MCU film. Period. That was super hard to get through. Oh, you know what? Actually, I'm sorry, because we're kind of getting off track here. I went back and looked at a post that I posted a, a number of years back, and I said that Iron Man 3 was the best Iron Man. I take that all back now. I 100% want to take that entire post back now. Because <laughs> I was like, I, I looked at it the other day, and I was like, what the hell was I thinking? Yes, by it has some of the best one-liners, but by no means is it. No, I, no. Thank you for ah. taking a enjoyable show and ruining it, James. I'm just, I just want, I sorry, I had to retract. I had to make sure I wanted to publicly retract that statement. <laughs> yes, eventually we will do our MCU rankings, I'm sure. Um, but uh, you know, at this point, I think we've already run long, so we should probably wrap it up. Uh, you know, thank you everyone, obviously that, that did join us today and, um, that's listening now, uh, via the podcast. Uh, if you missed any part of the episode today, uh, you can always go back and re-listen. Uh, we'll be up in just a few hours via anchor, Spotify, Apple music, iHeartRadio, Apple podcast, breaker, Google podcast, or radio public. Also be on the lookout. Yeah, we have our video that we'll post. We will post on YouTube later this week. So make sure you keep on the lookout for that. So until next time, my friends. What TD? <laughs> <laughs> I knew I was doing that for Mark because I know he would hate that. But uh, may the force always be with you. You will never understand the power of the dark side. Duh. <laughs> no. <laughs>